How's it going? Uh, I'm Mike from As A Friend Music and MichaelPitluck.com and I'm just going to show you how to make a pumping white noise sweep and let me play it really fast just to kind of show you what it sounds like. So now I want to create some white noise for the bridge of my song which is this section right here. I think the song could benefit from um, a little white noise sweep around this area just kind of going into that last chorus. Won't be long, no, won't be long. Won't be long. So we're just going to create um, a mono audio track. Alright, now that we've created our new track, I've just renamed it um, White Bridge. That just tells me it's the white noise during the bridge. Come over to um, the inserts and we're going to insert um, a white noise generator. And in Pro Tools, that's going to be under Plugins. You come down to Other and you select Signal Generator. So now that's playing at 1K. Um, but we don't want that tone, we want white noise. So there it is. The next thing I'm going to do is just kind of create the basic volume envelope that I want for this white noise in the song. So now we're going to automate the volume of the white noise track and create a little, little volume envelope. The way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to come to the top fourth of the track view window and I'm just going to drag the volume all the way down, all the way down to negative infinity. Then I'm going to highlight the region that I want the volume envelope to be in and I'm going to drag the volume up. It doesn't really matter how high at this point because I'm going to be tweaking it. And so after I've, cre I've, I've done that, I want this obviously to, I obviously want this to sweep or have some kind of sloping envelope. And so I'm going to come over to this node on the top right of, of this little envelope we've created and I'm going to hold down option and click on the node and that's going to get rid of, rid of that node. And now we have the sloping envelope. And so let's just hear how that sounds. Let's make sure that the signal generator is active. All right. The next thing we want to do is add an automated EQ. And so I'm going to come to our inserts, select the, Rena the Waves Renaissance 4 EQ. We're going to kind of shape the EQ the way that we want it. We want to select the frequencies. So the first thing I do is I'm going to set the resonant peak. And I do that by selecting this band right here, this third band, setting a high Q or bandwidth. Now what that does is just determines how many frequencies are going to be affected by the boost and I don't want very many affected by it. And so that's about right. And then I'm going to select the low pass filter, kind of drag it over to where the resonant peak is and I'm going to, going to, I'm going to set a pretty steep shelf or filter on that. Select the high pass filter, kind of drag that over. Now the cool thing is if we can select a whole row like this and so I've selected the frequency row. Now if I move, I can move them all together. Okay, So that's exactly what I'm going to be automating. As, a, as the volume goes up, I also want the frequencies to go up as well. So let's kind of hear what that's going to sound like. Next thing is automating. Let's automate this EQ. And the way that we automate the EQ in Pro Tools, and I'm sure you can automate this in other DAWs, is we come to this top bar here. It says Track, Preset, Auto, and Map. We want to come right underneath Auto and click on this. This is where we select which parameters of the EQ we want to automate. And we want to automate the frequency parameters. So we're going to add Band 1 frequency. We're going to add band 2 frequency, band 5 frequency, and finally 
band 6 frequency. We've told Pro Tools which of the EQ parameters we want to automate, and so now we're just going to automate those. On the bottom left of the track, there's a little arrow, and we want to click that, and it's going to drop down some automatable features of the track. So we're going to change the volume parameter to come down to these plugin parameters. Pro Tools has set up for you the volume. You can automate the volume, the mute button, the pan, or if you have plugin parameters that you've told Pro Tools you want to automate, they're going to be added at the bottom. Pro Tools is telling us which plugin we're going to automate, and we're going to automate the Renaissance EQ4. And here are all the bands that we set to be automated. And so I'm just going to select band 1. And then to the left of band 1 frequency, there's a plus sign. So that's going to add a new automatable um, feature to the track. And so it, by default, it's going to select the next automatable parameter. And so it's already selected band 2. So I'm going to select the plus sign again. And now it's on band 5, as you can see. And then finally band 6. So now we're going to create that envelope that automates the frequency band. So I'm going to select the region that I want to automate. I'm going to pull the, um, the frequency up. This is the uh, high pass filter. And so I want that to be a little bit lower in the frequencies than the resonant peak and the low pass filter. So I drag this up to about 10K. Then I'm going to, whoops, then I'm going to take out this notch by holding down option and clicking. Now I'm going to come over to the, uh, what is it, the resonant peak, drag this up to probably about 15k. These are all going to be adjusted. I'm just setting up the blueprint, really. And then finally coming over to the low pass filter, I'm going to drag that up just above the resonant peak, maybe to about 16k. And then take out that notch. So we've automated it. Let's kind of hear what that sounds like. Okay, so now I'm going to add uh, the compressor. Compression is what's going to give us the pumping sound. So I'm just going to choose the R compressor from Waves, the Renaissance compressor. And I'm just going to put the threshold all the way down, the ratio all the way down, the attack uh, really fast attack, really fast release, and I'm going to mess around with these parameters. Um, not in this video, but I suggest you guys mess around with these parameters to get it sounding the way that you want. If you want it to sound a lot more pumpy, then just pull the release back quite a bit, or at least until uh, it sounds good. The way that we're going to be using this compressor is we're going to be using a key input, and we're just going to choose a mono input, one bus 132. And what that says is when we get a signal from bus 30, 132, that's gonna turn on this compression. So we're gonna go create a kick track right now, and we're gonna send that to bus 132 um, in eighth notes. So we're gonna set up the kick in eighth notes. And every single time the kick hits, it's gonna turn on the compressor, and the compressor is gonna compress the white noise. And so that's what's going to give it the, the pumping sound. Okay, so now we need to create a phantom kick drum track that we're going to put in eighth notes. Uh, that we're going to use to trigger the compression on the white noise track we just created. So I'm going to do, make it easy for myself and duplicate this 808 track that I have with the active playlist and everything. And I'm going to move it on the other side of my kick drum bus, uh, which is right here. These are my kick drum buses. And then I'm going to create an auxiliary track by hitting Command Shift N. And then I'm going to change that to a stereo auxiliary. Hit Enter for Create. And now I have my auxiliary track. And so I'm going to name this Phantom Kick. And then. Uh, Phantom Kick Bus. So, all right, and I'm going to make these a very obvious color. 
so that we can keep track of them pretty easily. Okay, so now I've created my phantom track, and I'll explain why I created an, I bust it to an auxiliary track, but we still have to bus it. So I'm going to send this out to bus 41 and 42, have the input of the auxiliary track on bus 41 and 42, so now they're bussed. So let's solo this. Make sure it's working, we can hear it. So that's our phantom track. And I'm just going to paste the kick drum where I want the pumping to go on the compression. So, so right there. And then I'm just gonna duplicate this by hitting Command D, Command D, Command D, Command D. Okay. So that's how I want it to go. I want it to go. So we're going to use these kick drums as the trigger for the compression on the white noise. Play this in context. We're going to hear those kick drums. And it won't be long, no. Eventually, we're not going to want to hear those kick drums, but we're going to leave them in for now. We want to send this kick drum to the key input of the compressor. And so that was bus 132. Okay. Now this little send window pops up, holding down option and clicking. And it just goes right up to unity gain. Okay, so now we just want to make sure that everything's being routed correctly. We have our compressor, the key input is bus 132, and our phantom kick drum is being sent to bus 132. So our routing is good. Now let's see if it's working. Won't be long, no, won't be long. Won't be okay, so that's working. Uh, as we see, the kick drum is triggering the compression on the on the the white noise track, which is exactly what we want. The next thing we want to do is get rid of these kick drum hits. Now we want to use them, we want them to be there, we just don't want to hear them. We just simply want to use them as the trigger for the compressor. So now I'm going to explain why I created the auxiliary track that I bust the phantom kick to. Okay, let's start by showing that when I play this and um, we're gonna see that the compressor and the send is working. And it won't be long, no. Okay, so the send is working, and that is sending information to the key input on the compressor. Okay, that's all good. And this compressor is compressing the white noise. So that's all good. But the thing is, we don't want this kick drum. We don't want to hear it. We only want to use it as a trigger to trigger the compression on the white noise track. And so, let's just mute it. Let's try just muting that track. Now, if we mute that track, then it's not going to send any information to the key input for the compressor, so we're not going to get any that pumping that we want. But let's just make sure that's right. And it won't be long, no, won't be. Exactly. So the send's not working, and if the send's not working, then obviously the key input's not going to get any information. And so that's why I created this auxiliary track. Okay, I bust the, in, the audio from this track, from this phantom kick drum track, to the phantom kick drum bus. That way, this audio is being sent. It's being sent both to the send and to this bus. But what if we just muted the bus? Okay. Now, if we mute the bus, then this information, this audio is still going out of this track. It's just going into this track, which happens to be muted. And this audio is still also going out to the send. Now, let's make sure that works. And it won't be long, no. And so that's exactly what we want. We have the pumping, but we don't have the kicks. We're just using the kicks literally as a trigger for this compression. And that's exactly what we wanted to end up with. Now let's just listen to the white noise. So we can hear what we just did. So that's it. Thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.